Although Mexico has been consistently pushing out weird and wonderful horror movies since the 50s, its home impact on the gaming industry has been less prolific. Aside from the LucasArts adventure classic Grim Fandango, Mexico usually turns up as a race course or somewhere to ride your horse to when the Texan lawmen start taking exception to your prostitute murdering. It's not like the source material isn't there. You might be able to entertain plausible fantasies of snapping Chupacabra's scrawny body over your knee if you ever caught him sucking on your goats, but a showdown with the Skinwalkers, the Stiff-Legged Bear, La Llorona, or El Cuco might end with slightly more ship decorating your pants, and you're probably only beating the Chupacabra if you find him before he hits his second form. You don't want that to happen. Enter Abo Mando, or Arbo Mando, however your brain wants to digest that one, which apparently is an instant classic in the pseudo style of an NES platformer that dumps you in the middle of a grim Mexican horror scape to do battle with such supernatural legends as ghosts and bats and uh, cats? Is that a cat? Lord fucking knows. You've got two buttons in the directional pad to worry about, one to jump and the other to shoot, as you fight your way through ten levels and five bosses in a quest to return to your own time period after being unceremoniously dumped in the 1800s by aliens, after they've finished doing whatever it is aliens usually do to people. There's also a sprint available by holding the shoot key, which you have to work out for yourself because Arbo Mando just plain forgets to clue you in on it. While most of your adversaries will surrender to the sheer ferocity of your firepower, others can only be defeated by stamping on their heads, and others can't be taken down at all. Between the endearingly simple mechanics, pleasing Castlevania inspired soundtrack, and authentic visuals, Arbo Mando's initial attempts to emulate the 8-bit giants of the 1980s seem to stand on solid ground. But hold off that purchase button, lovelies, because once you venture a little way into this Latino nightmare factory, you'll find that it's not just the charming aesthetics of the NES library that the game is attempting to mirror, it's the absolute worst of its bullshit too. Enemy respawning and off-screen drawing problems were something of a staple in older console games, usually as a result of the extremely limited memory available to the developers, but I'm struggling to remember anything as utterly fucking heinous as this. Look at this crap, goddammit! They just spawn right the fuck on top of you, sometimes in mid-air. It's like you've got a Ouija board stuck up your ass. I mean, there's a fair amount of health dropped to counteract this utter nonsense, but good luck catching it before it disappears down a chasm or plunges to the bottom of a pit you've just spent 30 seconds trying to climb out of. Even if you did summon the patients to go and grab it, that'll just spawn a shit ton more enemies, so what's the point? There is no excuse for this bollocks. Not ever. There are few things in gaming as incalculably irritating as your opponents spawning right on top of you without a fair window of retaliation, and Arbo Mando takes it to a whole new level. Even the bosses do it. First boss in the game and they shat on it like a monkey's bed. Instant classic. Can I just take you on a quick tour of some genuine NES platforming classics? Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden, DuckTales, Mega Man, Contra, Kirby's Adventure, Super Mario Brothers, Metroid, Clash at Demon Head, Shadow of the Ninja, Vice Project Doom. You know what all those games had that all platformers should have? More than one fucking colour in their stage designs. And why is that? Why do you think that might be an immediately obvious aesthetic choice to anybody that isn't either blind or intellectually hampered by a prior sledgehammer assault? How about, so you can see where you're supposed to be bloody jumping and see what you're supposed to be fucking fighting? Yeah, it's probably an artistic decision and I respect it from that angle, but that doesn't stop it from being an arse backward one that makes the game unbearably tedious to play. It's something we all struggled with back in the monochromatic days of the Game Boy, but even under those limitations the majority of the titles managed to convey an ergonomically agreeable sense of where you were going to fall to your death. I didn't finish Arbo Mando, I think I was about halfway in when this dick flapping malarkey started kicking off. In this level, if you touch the ground for more than half a second, you die, so you have to keep jumping. Am I convinced it was intended to be that way? Not entirely, based on prior evidence, but whatever. 
I got the game to be okay with me using the ground so long as I kept shooting at one point, but it soon got bored with that. You're always at a loss when you're trying to explain shitty controls in a review like this because you really have to hold this shit in your hands for yourself to understand it, but I assure you, they are particularly insufferable here. You're forever getting caught on invisible clumps of terrain, which kills you, undershooting your jumps due to a lack of nuance in the controls, which kills you, or hitting these flying scythes, which kills you. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave this for some other sucker to grind through, I think. I mean, I am a tiny bit disappointed. I quite like the ideas behind the boss fights, even if they drag on for a fucking ice age. Good lord. Weeping wife of Christ. Oh, Donna, cancel my two o'clock. But ultimately, this is another of Steam's so-called hardcore throwbacks that fails to grasp that the term hardcore is not an excuse for pedantically lazy design and coding. Mi cargo enter puta madre. 